Made it for the Texas Custom Barbecue Pits. This is Rich. I'm doing a quick cell phone video of this 24 by 60 or 5 foot long single door main chamber pellet grill. Dual hoppers. Those are 35 pound capacity hoppers with pellet dumps. We have a hopper on the right hand side with the pellet chute there, dump. And we have a pellet hopper on the left side and the dump is on the back for it. Dual birdhouse stacks, single door wide cut counterweighted with three tail true gator pit gauges. And it's a coal pit. I did fill it up with some pellets and we're fixing to fire this thing up and see how it runs. This is the first 24 by 60 that I have designed. It is going to a restaurant in California. And I'll put uh, a video up on YouTube to show what this thing does here, guys. It's got a 14 inch drop down stainless steel shelf, heavy duty 8 inch casters with foot brakes, and some gator badging. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. And I'll come back after I I'll put my phone down so I can fire it up. And I'll come back and shoot some more video, guys. Alright, I fired up this big boy Gator Pit Pellet Grill at 11.16 and at 11.27 it was 280 plus degrees. You can still see it there. It says 286. I kicked it down to 270 temps. I'm going to let it calm back down. That's 280 right there. I don't know if it shows up. Sometimes the LEDs don't show up right on the video. But that says 280. That says 285. I bumped it down to the mitts uh, selection or button, which is going to be uh, 270. And you can see you got a hint of smoke coming out. Hopefully it picks up the video. I'm going to get some dark background. There you go. Got a hint of smoke coming out. Turn this way. There you go. You don't see any smoke coming out my doors. No smoke, guys. No smoke. I didn't season this. There's no cooking oil in there. So I don't have anything sealing the doors other than the door seals themselves, which are our standard. Uh, flanging that we've on all of our gator pits. I'm cooking with the Traeger blend pellets today, as you can see here. This is what I recommend size wise, uh, not the BB because the BBs are too big uh, and can jam up your auger, uh, at least on these augers. There you go, guys. It went from a cold pit to 280 plus degrees in about 10 minutes. This is a big pit to do that. All right, guys, Rich back here. This is that 24 by 60 single door, quarter inch thick pipe, dual hopper pellet cooker. We've got the hopper set at 275. This one's right on 275. Uh, this one went from 276 to 280 just now. So the hopper or the fan must have kicked in on it. Now it's at 279. This one's at 276, 275. They're bouncing around at 275 degrees, which is what they're set at, which is great. It's what you want. Look at the gauges on the door. Again, it's a five foot. Gauges are running even as well. The one in the middle is a little hotter than the left and the right. But the difference between the, the difference between them is, is really insignificant. Now keep in mind these door gauges are never going to read exactly what the what these um, are for the most part aren't going to read exactly what your digital displays are temperature-wise on these hoppers because the thermostats for these are placed inside the cooker which is a lot different than a door gauge with a two and a half inch stem so if you get the pellet cookers with these gauges on there just let the hopper do what it's supposed to do and set the temperature on the hopper to what you want to cook at and then these gauges are just going to be somewhere around that giving you a kind of an idea of where you're at from a distance so anybody that's got these pellet, pellet cookers uh, just just know that uh, 
these gauges have nothing to do with how these digital controllers run. Again, they're electronic and they're digital. So set your temperatures here and just let it do it, run its course and do what it's supposed to do. Because you can throw a piece of meat right here and guess what, this gauge just went down, which is gonna throw you completely off. That cold, it's gonna pick up that cold meat. Whereas the, the, the temp gauges inside for these hoppers will not do that. All right, but look at this, clean burning, no leaking. It's a great pit, guys. Good commercial pit for a restaurant. This is going to Big Dane and Bell's Texas Barbecue in California. Check those guys out. Big Dane and Brett Bell out there, the owners of that company, great guys. They have a at least one other gator pit that's this size, if not bigger. Um, and now they're getting their, their commercial pellet cooker from Gator Pit for their restaurant. And I believe they're gonna be ordering another one next month. But check these guys out over in California. Big Dane and, and Brett Bell. Some of y'all may recognize Big Dane from uh, West Coast Customs out there in Corona, California. And that's the Big Dane I'm talking about. They've got a restaurant, Big Dane does, along with his partner, Brett. Check those guys out. But guys, this thing's running perfect, man. I cook on this all day long. Don't have to tend a fire. Fill up your hoppers and just let it do, its, do what it's supposed to do. See, it's back at 276, 278. I don't know if this is picking it up. That's 277, 278. 276 it's just hovering around at 275 which is what it said at it's what it's supposed to do and it'll do it all day long guys check it out gatorpit.net this is going to be available commercial model on our website you will see it listed on our website here in a week or two once our webmaster can get it up on the website i'm going to call this right now i think i'm going to call it the big boy gator pellet cooker 24 by 60 quarter inch thick steel quarter inch thick steel no leaking look no leaks and it is fired up guys it's fired up i can see a little hint of smoke coming out of the stacks when that fan kicks in you'll see a little bit more smoke come out the stacks that's what it's designed to do it does have the dual grease pans in there dual fire pot uh heat shields in there with dual fire pots obviously because they got two hoppers on both ends and you can see this thing's running even temperature even temperature and you can tell by the hopper thermostats as well 277 276 easy guys get a gator pit have a pit for life quit fighting the other pits let the pit do the work for you rich robin see you out all right rich robin we're back here at this big old big boy gator pit pellet cooker 24 by 60 with a quarter inch wall i set the dual hoppers at 350 degrees and I don't know if you can see sometimes these LEDs don't show up on video but that is exactly 350 on this side right here and this is 353 on this side right here had no problems getting to 350 degrees uh, I went from a 275 temp setting that I had it at earlier to 350 see our gauges here the middle gauge is running 350 it's hot the reason this gauge is hot in the middle is because you've got all that uh, 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 those dual hopper those dual fire pots in there One's about right here, and one's about right here. And because we have dual grease pans running and sloping towards the middle to go out that drain that's in the middle, you're getting more heat right here. I, I separated those, those pans apart. I would bet if I put those pans touching each other, grease would still fall out in the middle, but I bet it would cut that little, that temperature variance right here down and get it a little closer. But I'm, I'm not gonna mess with that right now. I just wanna see how hot this sucker can get and it gets up there to 350. I'm gonna hit 375 and see what it does on that. I'm not worried about this up here. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not too concerned about it. Let's see what's happening inside here. Knock one of my, ooh, I'm gonna burn my fingers, you watch. Woo! That's running hot, look at that. This sucker is blazing, man. But you can see here where that space is. There's a gap between the grease pans. You're getting a lot more hot air coming through there that's not being quite diffused like you do around these grease pans in there. And that's why your center is going to run a little hotter. If I close that up like you would do in a tuning plate, so to speak, in my offset smokers, I bet I cut that little hot spot down in the middle. I'm not touching anything right now because this thing is blazing. Look at the gauge. But that shows you right here, man. 350, 350, guys. That is what these are saying out here 349 350 and we are this one cooled off because the door was open it's bouncing back up now you can see it going up going up climbing up climbing up 
this one stayed hot probably because we got a wind blowing that direction it'll get back up here but guys this is running great man running great anybody cooks on a pellet cooker knows uh this is uh you know what i'm talking about here this is what it's supposed to be doing it's a big pit i'll come back and shoot some more video here in a little bit let it get back up the tent and see what happens all right guys i'm back hit 375 went from 350 to 375 in just a couple of minutes i'm hitting 376 on that hopper i'm at 379 on this one so this thing's going to bounce back and around between 375 380 uh, it might go to 370 but it's going to bounce at that 375 and pretty much maintain it uh 376 379 uh, it's going guys it is doing what it's supposed to do let me back it up here that is hot that is hot uh, I personally would never have this thing at 375. I'm a 250, 275 kind of temp cooker. Maybe if I was through some just some chicken wings or something on here, some chickens, I might go 325 with the hottest on this. Uh, but yeah, this thing a blaze, man. I bet if I hit four, set it at 400, it'll do 400, which I'm going to do that too. Let's go ahead and let me turn this off. I'm going I'm to see, see what it does. All right, guys, I set it to 400, 407 on this hopper over here. It's at 393 on this one, which is still, it's still catching up or climbing up. 393, 407. And they'll get, no even out, they'll get closer here. But I just want to show y'all that this thing will get extremely hot. That's hot for a 24 by 60 quarter inch thick pellet cooker big pit but uh i'm gonna turn it out now and i'm actually gonna shut this thing down let it cool so we can put it up uh, at the end of our, our shift today again rich robin here at gator pit of texas custom barbecue pits quarter inch wall 24 inch diameter by five foot or 60 inch single wide cut door with counterweight three tail two true gauges 14 inch drop down shelf uh dual hoppers with uh pellet dumps on them and uh, heavy duty all weather, eight inch casters with foot brakes, two inch ball valve drain, and dual birdhouse stacks. Stainless steel cool touch handles, and upper and lower full size sliding meat racks inside. Uh, this thing is is amazing to be quite honest. It is so freaking hot. Look at that, man. Look at the gauges. It's a lot hotter at the grate level than it is reading anywhere else. And that is typical of any cooker. So anybody cooking on a pit, always know that you're actually hot or temp inside those pits at the grate where that meat's touching than you are on any gauge reading anywhere else. A lot of people make that mistake, being dependent on those gauges 100%. They are not 100% accurate. I don't care on what pit you're talking about. They ain't gonna be door gauges or even these because they're only picking up the temperature that is around the area where they're at. They're just an idea of what's happening inside these pits. That's why I like cooking 250, 275. That is a good overall smoking temperature for cooking anything. Not too hot and not too cold. Again, this is Rich Robin, Gator Pit, Texas. I'm out of here. I'm going to shut this thing down and let it cool. There's my contact information. Here's where I'm at. Come see me. It's Rich. See ya.